think it should be obvious to you why she is a mentor for so many of us in critical care and why she's literally a global leader in critical care medicine. So thank you again, Dr. Cook. It is now my pleasure to invite early career investigator Dr. Bo Wang to the stage. Dr. Wang is a professor at the University of Toronto, CIFAR AI, or Artificial Intelligence Chair at the Vector Institute, and lead AI scientist at the University Health Network's Peter Monk Cardiac Center. Dr. Wang was selected by Drs. John Dick and Dr. Stuart Orkin for his work on machine learning-based approaches to development trajectories of hematopoietic stem cells. So thank you. Please, Dr. Wang. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very honored and deeply grateful for this amazing opportunity and award. A special thanks to Dr. John Dick and Dr. Stuart Orkin for their nomination and recognitions. I often introduce myself as a computer scientist who happens to be interested in biology. Today, I want to talk about how machine learning or artificial intelligence can help advance our understanding of hematopoietic stem cells using single cell myomic data. So, first of all, quick question. Uh, what is the first thing appearing in your mind when people mention artificial intelligence? I guess probably it is like this for some people. However, in reality, AI is much less cooler. Instead of threatening people's life like alien, AI is actually helping improve people's daily life. For instance, it has been widely used in smartphones to understand our voice, or it is used in autonomous driving cars to free tired drivers. AI, like no other, has struck on our life like a storm. Without little doubt, we are entering a new era where AI is greatly advancing the pace of science as well. Notable examples include AlphaFold, an AI tool by Google's DeepMind to predict 3D structures of protein folding, a biology problem unsolved for more than 50 years. AI is also being used to expedite the drug discovery process. And relevant to my research, AI or deep learning is shaping many single cell data analysis or many other genomic data. But one may wonder, what makes AI so successful? My solution to you is very simple. I summarized as ABCD as an analogy to sports cars. So if we think of AI as a sports car, to make the car run really fast, you need four things, great wheels, strong engine, articulate steering, and sufficient oil. Same thing applies to AI. We need these four components as well. Here, A, algorithms, other engine. B, business, is the steering wheel. C, computing, is the four wheels. And last, D, data is the new oil, or electricity if you want to be friendly to the environment. So in a more academic setting, AI is a very wide concept in which machine learning is really, a sub, is really a subset of AI. Further, deep learning, the very algorithm behind all the hype of AI, is just a subset of machine learning. So what is deep learning? Deep learning is an algorithm that bases on multi-layer neural network, which I show on the right. In it, you have a bunch of artificial neurons that can be set on and off and there are connections with neurons. The cool thing about deep learning is that it can automatically adjust these millions of weights by showing lots of real world examples. The question I ask here is that how can AI advance the understanding of hematopoietic stem cells, or HC for short? The project I want to talk about today is really motivated by a few recent works by both Dr. John Dick and Dr. Stuart Orkin. Specifically, Dr. John Dick's group recently proposed a cellular hierarchy framework that combines both bulk RNA-seq and single-cell RNA-seq to understand the heterogeneity of ML patients. Further, to fully grasp the differentiation process of HSCs, both groups suggest that we should go beyond just transcriptomic signatures by including chromatin structures or some other epigenetic data. Therefore, we propose a new approach which bases on novel data-driven method, specifically machine learning, to integrate single-cell multi-omic data to further understand the heterogeneity of ML and to infer the developmental trajectory of HSCs. 
As I mentioned before, a recent paper by Dr. John Dick's group in Nature Mas uh, Medicine proposed a new ML hierarchies which deconvolve single cell RNA-seq with large cohort of bulk RNA-seq data from ML patients. And the defined cellular hierarchies can well explain many clinical heterogeneities such as drug sensitivity, genetic mutations, and survival progressions. Moreover, with this tool, we can now project single-cell RNA-seq data of any ML patient into a normal hematopoietic development map and understand the patient-specific trajectories, moving single-cell genomic one step closer to the clinical adoption. However, the newly proposed cell hierarchy still does not fully solve the heterogeneity of ML patients. For example, if we project a collection of public single cell RNA data from ML patients into these four hierarchies, we still see quite large heterogeneity among these four clusters. So this leads to our M1. Can we do a better job in dissecting the ML heterogeneity by integrating other genomic data, such as RNA such as DMS relations? What we have done so far is take RNA data and cellular compositions of eight, about 800 ML patients and DMS relation of a subset of 300, about 300 ML patients and develop a novel machine learning algorithm called SAM2 to provide a comprehensive view of ML heterogeneity. SAM2 is a data-driven machine learning algorithm that is based on two of my previous approaches uh, published in my lab. The advantage of SM2 is its ability to merge a collection of non-overlap genomic data in an unsupervised manner. If you recall, we have RNA data for eight, about 800 ML patients, but a methylation only for about 300 patients. So traditional integration method will have to take the intersection of the two modality by discarding the non-overlapped RNA data. However, this is not an issue for our SM2. After SAM2 integration, our method finds 12 distinct subtypes of ML. We can see that these 12 subtypes have very different cellular hierarchies and transcriptomic patterns, but also different genomic patterns. Further, we verify that among the 300 ish AM patients, the methylation profiles and the metabolic pathways are quite distinct too. Clinically speaking, these ML clusters have significant different survival patterns and drug sensitivity. We also map these 12 clusters onto single cell map of normal hematopoietic lineage and find distinct marker gene enrichment pattern. We then further validate these 12 clusters onto some other public ML cohorts such as TCGA and BEAT ML. And again, we find significantly different survival progressions. All of these validations give us confidence about our machine learning approach and the validity of the found 12 subtypes. The second aim of this project, which is still an ongoing work, is to integrate single cell myelomic to have a comprehensive view of continuous developmental trajectory of HSCs. Specifically, we will develop a deep learning algorithm uh, called DeepVelo to combine both single cell RNA-seq and single cell ATAC-seq from multiple HSC conditions in order to learn the RNA velocity in a data-driven approach. Once the model is trained, we will open the black box and use sensitivity analysis to interpret the trained model and perform motive analysis to identify relevant transcription factors that may drive the self-differentiation of HSCs. So the deep learning system named DeepVelo uh, represents one of the first deep learning based attempts to learn cell specific kinetics and is currently under review. Uh, DeepVelo had already been successfully al applied to learn the RNA velocity of human cerebellum development using single cell data. The success in brain data give us confidence that this approach will also be helpful to HSC myomic data. Last but not least, I want to conclude my talk by summarizing that machine learning, or AI, really represents a paradigm shift in modern genomic research. Traditional approach usually is hypothesis driven, while machine learning enabled approach many times is data driven. Traditional approach often work on small data set from single lab, but machine learning enabled research approach requires large scale data with multi-center validation. Computationally, traditional bioinformatics often use stepwise pipelines that are specific to each task. 
while a machine learning approach tends to work on general purpose framework with carefully designed end-to-end -end framework on more advanced hardware such as GPUs. With the prevalence of AI, collaboration between computational scientists and biological scientists are um, ultimate important than ever before. Last, I want to thank again Dr. John Dick and Dr. Stuart Orkin for their foundational work that inspired my research. Also, many thanks to my amazing mentors and collaborators, and certainly all the credits go to my trainees and students. Thanks for listening.